Hey everyone, I'm Justin Woodring. In just under eight minutes, I'm going to explain the ins and outs of static websites. Now, um, if a static website kind of sounds like a bunch of files on a server that don't really get changed, uh, well then your intuition wouldn't be far off. And um, you can certainly write those by hand, and that kind of seems like conversation would be done there, but it is much more in-depth than that. And um, there's certainly, by hand is not the only means of creating a static website. Um, and so we'll be looking at some of the popular tools that are used to create static websites. Um, some of the limitations surrounding static websites and um, at the same time, like what kind of things a static website might avail itself towards being good at, um, like why you might want to use one in this circumstance. And altogether, that conversation kind of being summed up in, um, you know, what or why would you want a static website you know what can you use one for um so yeah we'll be discussing all of that today so let's get started so to preface what we'll be talking about a little bit more um most of the time when people refer to a static website they're going to be talking about something that is being generated so obviously they could be written by hand like i said earlier a static website is just a file but um you know that's kind of tedious so typically what people do is they're going to write some kind of system of um, or they're going to set up a system that basically they provide content to and then it formats it in a given way. And um, this would be, you know, uh, what they call a static site generator or an SSG. Now, static sites can be used for several different things and they are generally avail themselves to um, towards unchanging type of content so content doesn't need to be updated and isn't dynamic um at least not dynamic in the sense that it is um storing user interaction so it might be dynamic to the user like you know a search bar may still work but something like but the search bar in reality is actually running on the browsers on the client's browser the entire time um it's not going to be doing anything that requires computation on the whatever server is actually hosting the project. Um, and one of the benefits, well, there's actually many benefits to static sites. So just to go over a list of a few pros and cons, um, static sites are, not only are they fast to serve because they don't really require much computation, um, if any, other than just literally delivering files, they're static, static files. Um, they are secure because if they don't require computation based on user input, like, you know, your standard, um, standard API or uh, server side website, like you know, standard WordPress application or something like that. You know, those types of websites they are more likely to deal with problems like um, SQL injection or something like that because they're interacting with databases and stuff. Um, particularly handling user content. Um, now this does have downsides. So this security you're getting also has limitations and that is that you don't get dynamic content. And by dynamic content, I mean, you aren't going to be able to store user comments or store how many users like your post without having some kind of external system set up. Now I know there's a couple providers out there. One of them is uh, Discuss. Um, you've probably seen them on one or two websites you visited at some point in the past, but if that is something you were going to try to accomplish, that's certainly one of the platforms I'd look at. Um, but now let's get on to actually static site generators themselves. A static site generator is just a basically a tool or it's basically a tool that is going to analyze some kind of directory and configuration pattern and then a content and that content may come from a variety of sources. And it's going to pull that all together and basically spit out a bunch of files that you can just put on any server. And that's kind of the beauty of static site generation altogether is that these files can literally go anywhere. Um, you're not dealing with the limitations of even the static site generator itself because you can generate the files one place and deploy them somewhere else. Um, and the server doesn't need to be able to do anything more than literally serve a static file. Um, also, that means that hosting is usually a bit cheaper. Um, I use static site generation for my personal blog, um, and like I said, it also avails itself to documentation because documentation doesn't change too fast. Um, so certainly it is, if you are considering something like for your next blog, that's something I'm going to check out. Um, GitHub Pages, for example, is a service that uses um, static site generation t under the hood to convert um, content to basically a... Um, to a kind of blog space for projects and users. Um, 
and it uses Jekyll, but you can actually swap out whatever you're using to generate the files and just have it serve them statically. Um, you can even go as far as just uh, point your domain name at the GitHub pages address that you get, and that way you only have to purchase a domain name and you don't even have to maintain your own hosting server. Um, but that said, you know, you can also do what I've chosen to do, which is compile the servers using, uh, compile the files using GitHub Actions, and then um, deploy them to your own personal server. So if we actually switch to the, um, this is my personal website, and this is statically generated. So um, this is going to be, you know, you can see that there is certainly, you know, it looks it's, you know, it's, it's updatable. I only have one blog post because I actually just brought this online. Um, but, you know, it, it has links and stuff like that, and it generates. And the content, if we switch over to GitHub, um, the content is, you know, I've, I've got all these assets and, temp, like, configuration files and stuff like that. So, like, I've basically got these templates. And you're going to write these, given whatever static site generator you're using may have a different templating language, but it's going to look something like this. Basically, something that has some way of passing content through and then basically creating lists of like blog content stuff like that so like my actual post is a markdown file um right here and it's just as simple as that you know uh that's the other thing blog sex i generators they don't necessarily have to uh consume content from a um they don't have to consume content from a uh from like a database they can you can actually set up a headless cms which means you use wordpress to basically bake the content um you know just so you can write it somewhere and then you can use some other tool to pull it so um a couple of popular tools i'm aware of are um going to be uh hugo jekyll zola is the one i've chosen for this website which is just because i like what it's implemented in which the rust um and i like it's very user-friendly, in my opinion. It's definitely not as full-featured as Hugo. It's probably Hugo is the best one. Um, and then some people also prefer composing their app, or the static sites in um, React because maybe some people just like the composition structure of React altogether. So there's another tool out there called Gatsby. Um, all four of those are static site generators tools that if you are looking at doing static site generation, I would definitely recommend you check out. Um, that's the end of this video, so if you have questions, then definitely post a comment below or like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Um, yeah, until next time.